Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories, let's start to story. AITA refusing to stand by my sister, the heartbreaking reason I can't be her maid of honor. As you might notice, I'm the snarky one. I've got four older brothers and one twin sister Violet, we're both 31. We were an oops baby, and then the WTF babies when mom found out her oops came with a spare. For all intents and purposes, I'm the spare. My parents did want a girl. They wanted a girl. Big difference. We're not identical, and Violet is absolutely beautiful, feminine, bright and bubbly. She's goddamn Jean Grey of the X-Men practically. I'm more of Rogue, not the classic one, more like that cartoon reboot from the 2000s when they made them all teens, and Rogue was standoffish, self-sabotaging and goth. We were really close, and I didn't really notice us drifting apart truly until high school, and by then, I had my own problems. One being fucking Daniel Swift fake name, this sloppy knob was always picking on me. He and his crew made school and community events absolute hell for me since grade school. By middle school, he had a name for me, it's to do with my Earl name, so let's say for this, it's Lumpy Lily. It's a name to remind me that I was fat. Looking back I know I wasn't, puberty hit me fast and hard and boom, baby got back. He was relentless and his friends were too. I told on him once because a teacher found me crying as I was forcing myself to throw up in the bathroom during practice. I don't know how but he managed to turn it around on me, saying I was bullying him, and his friends vouched for him, so I got suspended from the team during the season and had to write an apology letter in detention. He once slapped me and I went to tell, but he denied it, saying I punched him in the stomach, and he turned on the waterworks, and his friends said they saw me hit him and call him a loser. My parents were so upset with me, and my dad had to leave work to pick me up. He didn't believe me at all that I didn't do these things. He would rant that I'm not the only kid, and I need to stop being so much trouble. So I shut down, kept my head down, and didn't bother to say anything. He called me the defective one, the spare, the botched clone, everything he could think of, some were admittedly clever, but all were cruel. When Daniel picked on me, I would ignore him, and if I couldn't, I just endured it. I got into some hobbies, even made a good friend, Sonny, and now 31. Fast forward to now. I live a state over and have my main job as an educator. I love what I do. It feels good most of the time, but hey, this ain't Disney, sometimes being a teacher sucks raw rotten eggs in the summer heat, to be sure. But I get to be the adult I wish I had in the room when I was young. Sunny lives a city over from me, which in all honesty is a mere 20 men drive in traffic. So we see each other often. She's easily my best friend. Violet and I are still close, and same with my brothers, but we're all 30 plus now, some with kids and spouses and full ass lives, so we don't talk much. Violet and I would have calls and sometimes FaceTimes. My sister is incredible. She became a nurse, but quickly realized she wanted to be a nurse practitioner, and now she is out there helping people in need by donating most of her time outside of work at the shelter in our hometown. She looks after our parents and makes sure they have all they need. She owns a house, has an Etsy business, a blog, hell, a TikTok. She's kicking ass and I couldn't be prouder. Last year she was all excited because she thought she found the one. She called him James. Every picture of him, he's this big ex-military dude with tats and a beard and those douchey big sunglasses some guys never take off to save their lives. You know the ones. No shade if you do that too, but if you also own a truck as well and have a come and take it sticker on it a teensy bit of shade. Cause James did. So this past Easter rolled around, and I was talking with Vi about how excited I was to be around her and the boys again, and she mentioned that she was bringing James. I don't remember what I said, but I said something about being excited to finally meet this guy since dad and our eldest brother already have and said he's a stand-up dude. She got quiet and kinda had the tone like, yeah about that, so I paused to ask what was wrong. She said she needed to talk to me because James is my old crush from school. I was confused because while I was close with my siblings, I never talked about crushes with most of them, and definitely not Violet. It just wasn't what we talked about. I said I don't remember crushing on a James. And that's when she said that he went by his middle name, Daniel, in school. Now, Daniel's Earl name is pretty common, so I was like, well, I don't remember a Daniel I crushed on, but which one do you mean? And we narrowed it down to that soggy twatsicle. There wasn't much to say after that other than I never had a crush on him. She was relieved to hear that. 
She said she actually didn't realize James and Daniel were one and the same herself, until he brought it up on like the fourth date or something, and then she felt bad, but by then, she was already developing feelings and couldn't bear the thought of hurting me nor walking away from her chance at love. I decided to tell her a bit at Easter, and I did pull her aside before he arrived, as we all stay the night before over at the parents' house. I told her most of what I've not told you. This guy made my life hell. Violet was devastated, and she kept saying, you're sure it's him, and that was years ago, maybe you've got it wrong, to the point that I got frustrated and sort of gave up. Easter was tense, but Daniel did say hi to me like, long time no see remember me, and I just said, oh I do, and kept my distance. We all got together again for Juneteenth, and of course, Dandy Daniel was there, but this time Vi had a ring. My mother screamed with excitement, whooping through the restaurant telling any and everyone her baby girl is getting married. When the parents went home, a sibling's bar hopped the main street in the city to catch parts of the parade. Vi pulled me aside and inquired why I was avoiding her, and I just said I am happy for her if he makes her happy, she's my sister, and I would die for her. It's just complicated that he's my bully from school, and I don't want to be around him. She got quiet and said, well, thank goodness the bridesmaids and the groomsmen won't be interacting a lot, and as MOH, I would have minimal contact with him on the actual day. Then she started talking dresses, and I stopped her. I don't think I can be maid of honor. I don't feel comfortable in the same space as this person. MOH usually is a big job and interacts a lot with the couple. She shot back that, well after, he will be her husband so, am I to avoid him the rest of our natural lives, how when they have kids, how do I plan to pull that off? She broke down, saying I am ruining everything for my misconceptions about him and making it out that she has to choose between her love and her sister, and it's not fair. I said, whoa hold on, what misconceptions that he bullied me. Even now, in our thirties he can't admit to pushing me, hitting me, calling me every name he could come up with, and worse, she was hoovering his bullshit like a buffet. Now, my sister is still in the group chat acting like I am MOH. My older brother is nudging me to just get over myself and not stress Violet out. Then this morning, I am added to a new chat with a few folks and my sister. She texted us as the wedding party, and listed me as the MOH. I wanted to call her to remove this, but now I am second guessing. I am happy to attend, hell, I will bartend, sing, give a speech, anything, but I just don't want to stand up there as if I am on board with this. Maybe he's changed, and that's well. But it took years of therapy, lots of love from my friends, an intense amount of support groups, and so much effort to get to the somewhat normal I have. I don't purge anymore, I don't cut anymore, I actually communicate with my partner and my friends. It took so much to get over all that fucking hurt. And when I'm with my family, I'm labeled as trouble despite years of not asking for anything, not wanting to rock the boat with them. It feels like I can't be myself back home now, and it sucks, but this extra layer, Daniel, I can't just plaster a fake smile on, grin and bear this like I did. Thank you for listening to today's story. Have a nice day.